okay so uh, in today's session we will see more of uh, any point platform than any point studio and at the end if we have some time uh, we will do the installation of any point studio too okay uh, because uh, for a few sessions like two or three sessions we don't require any point studio right now that's why i'm not uh, directly uh, want you to download the uh, like the software right now okay so once we complete this any point platform part then we will jump to any point studio so typically any uh, project which you'll get will start from uh, this any point platform only you have to start creating it here then once you are created you have to import this uh, small piece of specification to your any point studio okay so we'll come to this one so this is our any point platform this is just a pictorial diagram of how and what are the components involved in it so the first one is any point design center so in design center you will be able to create your api specification so again uh, api specification means whatever we have a project like suppose we have a project of uh, to get the employee details uh, the simple project right so you have to provide the specifications here then only you'll be able to uh, do the actual implementation in any point studio what does the specification actually means if you're not able to understand now will when we will do the specification in today's or tomorrow class you will get to know exactly what the specification means uh, then we have any point exchange in any point platform so these are all component of any point platform in any point exchange suppose we are doing any uh, uh, like designing and we want any <clears throat> Uh, connector which is not available for us so we can uh, just download that connector from uh, mules uh, mulesoft provided connector or it may be a connector developed by your organization okay so we have both the options so we can uh, download any type of connector from any point exchange going to any point management center so once your application uh, your whole code is deployed to this runtime services then you use any point management center to manage your api to see that how many calls are getting triggered to see like what is my utilization of my application to increase the application uh, like uh, availability in different area so these kind of things and most importantly to improve the security prospect like uh, if you want to add some security features on top of your api because nowadays like if, if we're doing anything we should just protect it from the outside world right so that's why we can provide all the any point uh, like security and policies features through management center okay and this is how your api will uh, look like that it's a system api process api or experience api so all this m denotes a api Microsoft api okay and uh, it's uh, there's a pictorial diagram of how it is connected to the systems like SaaS apps, like Salesforce, the mainframe systems, the FTP, like suppose you have some files running on your Linux system. So you can connect to that also, okay? You have database, Oracle, MSQL, anything. You have some web services, then you have legacy systems like SAP and all. And this will, you will be a system API's input. And at the end, when you have an experience API, the user can directly put uh, the, in the information or request to the experience api that request will come to our process api from here there will be a call to our process api from process api there will be a, again api call to system api and then we will fetch so i'll give you an example of your mobile uh, like this mobile screen if you're able to see so suppose some user is there and you want uh, some customers information like uh, there's a sales rep which needs uh, information of some uh, client or some uh, customer. So what he will do is he will just put his name or ID, like as in Google search you do. As soon as you provide his name and ID, this experience API will trigger that request and the request will involve the name or uh, the ID, anything which is uh, there in the request. And it will send this data to the process API process api will do any changes like it will do the perfect formatting and something like that the transformation of data and then we will call our system api and when we are calling our system api in this case database then we will have the request uh, which has the name and we will fetch the all the details through name okay and then we will give back the user 
the information of that customer, that name, date of birth, address, contact number, all these things. So this is one example of how this layer and uh, the API works. Okay. Uh, if you are getting confused again in the experience process system layer, so if you have any doubt, you can just raise now or else uh, we can just wait for some time and then this will be clear that what exactly these layers means. Okay. And <clears throat> in your organization, this is how it will look like in a normal organization. You will deploy all these APIs. So you have deployed like some uh, like developer one created this API and then he left the company. Then again, developer two comes and he develops an API and he thinks it's better to connect uh, this de uh, developer one uh, API with the developer two API. So we can also connect these two APIs. So like that, uh, all the APIs which will be deployed on a system will be interconnected. Okay, and then you can use the, the advantage of interconnection is you can use it, use uh, and take leverage of it. Okay, that's why it is all interconnected. So moving on to the next uh, slide. So again, it's uh, uh, just telling us that how our, <clears throat> our any plan platform look like. So again, it has a design center will be there, exchange and management center. And we have a, a runtime engine there on our any point platform. And this runtime engine can be anything. It can be hosted by MuleSoft, which is typically most of the project are using. Uh, and then you have on-premises and private cloud. Then we have hybrid cloud and then you have cloud service providers like Amazon Azure and private uh, cloud, anything. So no, nothing much to explain in this slide. Coming to any point platform again. So uh, uh, it shows that customer hosted environment such as on-prem and private cloud. Customer hosted means like uh, if there's a client and they already have a system, like they have already have on-prem systems and private cloud. So that's why we call it customer hosted environment. So in this case, our application will run on customer hosted environment, this image, okay? The private cloud. And in the, the first case is on-prem. If they have on-premise system set up, then it will run on on-prem. And the third one is fully managed integration platform as a service, which is Cloud Hub. So this is uh, controlled and managed by MuleSoft. So at their advantage is of on-prem and uh, IPaaS. So it depends again on your organization that where you want to deploy your system. <clears throat> so regardless of where it is hosted, it has same connectivity option, okay? So there will not be any changes in connectivity. Only the change is that you, have, you will have to manage all the systems, applications, setup, security policies by yourself if you're doing in on-prem. And if you're doing on Cloud Hub, then it will be managed by MuleSoft. Like there, suppose there is a new um, version of uh, AnyPoint Studio or AnyPoint Platform or Runtime is coming. So you will not have to uh, update those uh, details. MuleSoft will do it for you. You just have to create your applications and deploy it. So you'll be free of all this uh, uh, like have all cards. Okay, next, moving to the API development cycle API specification. So this is what I was saying. This is the first step of any MuleSoft project. This is the first step. And this is how it is represented in a cycle. So first what you will do, you'll get the requirement that uh, <clears throat> you got a requirement of flights and uh, uh, your uh, stakeholder wants that uh, if I give a flight number or flight ID, I should get all the flight details displayed or if i don't give anything i just click on the endpoint i should able to get the flight all the flights that is the requirement so this requirement uh, we will be making the project on okay so the first phase when you get that requirement and you understood uh, understood the requirement that if we provide an endpoint uh, we should get all the flights and if you provide an id we should get the specific flight so let me just go to the example, uh, then you will understand what we will be making here.
So this is any point platform. Okay, let me log into, this is a new ID. I have to log out and use the other one which we have already created some applications. So, design center. So this is what I was talking about. This is the design phase. This is where we design design our flight. So you can see I have designed flights, get and post request, and I have designed flights ID. So whenever I click on this get, I should get all the flights. Okay. So this is already built by MuleSoft. I'll show you that. And again, we will also build it by us. So <clears throat> this is how your first step, the design phase will look like. So whenever you create an API, you give a name to it and we are giving American Flights API. And then we will just give the basic description uh, or definition about it, that what it does. So what are the operation it supports? It get, get all flights. Like whenever you click an endpoint, a URL, it will get you all the flights. It will not just ask any date or something. You just have to hit enter and it will get all the flights. The second is get a flight with specific ID. So when you want to get a flight with specific ID, you will just give the ID and you will get the flight with that ID only, not all the flights. And then you have an option to add a flight that if you want to add a flight, you'll add a flight or delete a flight or update a flight. So this API is providing all these operations and this is how uh, we will build it, okay? So first one, if you see, we have flights slash flights. So this is the resource, okay? that this will be our first resource, flight resource. What does resource means? Again, I'll go back to the make my trip example. So now you see, this is our endpoint, makemytrip.com, right? If I click here, you'll be uh, able to see the whole HTTPS and www.makemytrip.com, correct? This is our endpoint URL. But as soon as you click on any of these things, you see hotels. So we are under hotels resource. So anything which we will do here, any idea or something we'll provide, it will work on the hotels resource. If you provide a flight or something, it will not work because it's not under the flight resource. So when we click on flights, then it will work as a flight resource. So whenever after slash we have something, this is called a resource. So here also we have a resource called flights and under that we have get and post. So what get will do, we'll, as soon as we click on get, it displays like what are the requirements and what are all the things happening here. But we will not worry about these things right now. We will just see how it works if we click on get. So we will come down and we have this uh, uh, console where you can send your uh, details. It's just like Chrome browser. So it will ask you a few details and you can send. If you just give a send, you'll get output right now. See. So this is the flight resource and it says whenever you hit a send, you'll get all the flights. So right now we are getting two flights, okay? And then uh, we also saw that if we have a flight with specific ID, then we, we should get that flight. So I'll come to this resource slash ID and again, I'll do get and here I have the option to provide the ID. I'll provide one and I'll hit again. So I will see only one flight, right? So before even implementing the project, we have to just write few lines of uh, code and then we will be able to achieve this goal. So what will happen is we will create this API and once it is created, we will send this uh, uh, API to our stakeholders and they will also do the same thing which I am doing. They will see, okay, this person is uh, giving this URL and I'm when I'm doing a send, I'm able to get all the flights. And when I'm providing a single ID, I'm able to get all the, the, the flights which the required ID. So if they think they're, suppose um, they see this output and they see, okay, the ID doesn't look good. So we should write pl plain ID. So what they will say that, can you just change this uh, column to plain ID? Because this ID does not uh, look good here. 
So something, whatever they want, any changes or any data removal from here, they will ask us that they don't want to see this data. And then we will finalize one single uh, output from here. And then what is when it is defined, everything is logged here, we will implement the actual project. Okay, so this is not the actual product, this is just a specification. Whatever output I'm throwing out here, it's already defined. It's not fetching real time. That is a, a difference between specification and implementation. That here, whatever we are doing, we are doing through an example. So whenever, and understanding this thing very, uh, this is important that whenever doing whenever we are doing a send the data which you see it's not coming from real time data what we have done is we have given this data in our examples and it is fetching from our examples i'll show you this see this data id1 and all this this we have provided in our example section so here maybe we will not be able to see because it's uh, let's see if you are able to see see so the input and output it's already defined here so this is what they are uh, presenting. So we have to understand that whenever we are doing a specification, we are not actually connecting to a, a external system. We are just providing an example or mock. That's what we call. Okay. So we will go back to our slides. And now you will be able to understand what design means that we are designing some data and showing it to the user. Now you can ask me that why we are even using this design feature. Why don't we go to that AnyPoint Studio and directly uh, create an API? So there are two, three reasons for that. That if you use design feature, it will be like very uh, less time consuming within one or two, one days or two days maximum, if it's a big API, you will be able to achieve your end goal. And you can show it to your client. And then when he agrees and he validates it, you can actually do an implementation. When we do any, any implementation where a third uh, party or third uh, system is uh, there, any external system is there, obviously it will take some time, right? They will have to provide you details to connect then you have to import those dependency and details and then you will be able to connect. So it's better, always a good idea to always do a design before implementation. So once you design that code, you have the second one, which is simulate. So right now when I was doing a get call and that ID call that was called a simulation, right? That we are simulating it and seeing that how it is working. So that is simulating. Again, we will have a feedback from the client. He will say, okay, this ID field, I don't want this, uh, all these fields I don't want, I want limited details. So we'll take that feedback and then we will improve our API. So again, we will send him the details and he will validate. And after that, whatever we will get, that will called an API spec RAML. Okay, so this is how it is represented. We see the first step is API designer. Second is a mocking service where we are getting get and put all the calls. Then we will uh, post it to uh, publish it to exchange, which is the API portal. And here our, our uh, specification will be published in exchange. Then we have an API notebook. This is not used actually. So this is just for taking notes uh, and documentation of our API. Okay, so just uh, giving two more minutes to you guys. If you are having any doubts or any questions, can be any simple questions also, we can just take, then otherwise we'll move forward. Nothing from them. Okay. Uh, Kumar, one request. Mm, yeah. You know, once once we define, once we design that API mm -hmm. and once we created it, if yeah. you could come here and then if you take one or two minutes and explain that, explain, sh show this, the compare yeah, that. Sure. With, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. I, I will that do that. <clears throat> yeah, I'll okay. come back. I'll come back and show you how these steps actually happening and what we did. We'll show that. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. And after this, uh, if you don't have any other questions, we'll move to the other one. So once we are done with uh, our inner circle and also she were like, once you do one or two APIs and you start working, then you'll properly understand what does it mean, okay? So nothing okay. to worry about, it will be all clear. Okay, so the next stage is the development scale. 
previously it was just a development cycle but our specification we were giving here we were actually implementing it actual implementation of our project we will be connecting suppose if there's oracle system we will be connecting to our oracle system if there's a salesforce system we will connect to that salesforce system in the previous stage we were not actually connecting to any system we were just providing an example output to the uh, to the stakeholders so here uh, there are two steps one is built and one is test so built is your anypoint studio here if you can see anypoint studio you will build the actual code right like the other day we did that hello world code like that you will be uh, building it and once it is built there is a m unit test cases so again uh, this is the last step we don't uh, test it right away because we know our code is working by the output but this is something uh, used by the clients okay to just uh, document and do that how the code is working so we will do at last uh, we don't prefer to do it in the starting so this is m unit testing okay. and then we will have after this testing we have a fully fledged web service with an api okay so we will get a web service with this so after this if you provide if i provide you uh, the url you will be able to hit and get the real time data the third stage is yeah what is m unit M unit is just suppose you have built an application. I'll show you. Suppose this is an application you built, correct? Mm -hmm. So what happens is uh, uh, it's a project uh, requirement which uh, everyone has to fulfill. So the client will decide that what will be the coverage of M unit. When I mean coverage, what we will be doing in M unit is we will just do a right click here and then we have some option is M unit, right? So you can do create blank test for this flow. As soon as you do a create blank test for this flow, automatically everything will be created for you. If I do a create blank test for this flow, it will take some time and everything will be created like this API, okay? Let's give us a second, yeah. So see, it's already created. The flow reference is created and you have validation and behavior here. So validation means so now, right now, I am connecting to an external system, which is Salesforce, right? But in uh, when I'm connecting to Salesforce, what I will do is I will provide some input. Suppose I'm providing one ID, okay, of one customer. If I'm providing an ID, I will get the details of, of that customer. So my input will be ID. My output will be the details of their customer. But in M unit, again, you should not connect to an external system. You just have to mock that systems. So again, you will uh, get some uh, a mocking URL here and you will just provide your input output and you will run the whole system again. So the coverage will be there that 70% uh, or 80% coverage is happening. And then uh, the client will agree, okay, this uh, is uh, like, this is working as fine and then they will give you a green flag that okay you can de uh, deploy this api on uh, cloud hub so it's just kind of testing but uh, we we will not involve this external system we will just mock this system's input and output and then we will check that if it is uh, and we will keep a validation here that if this uh, output is uh, uh, meeting our validation that uh, are we getting all the details from it Suppose there's a failure in the Salesforce system and we're not getting that. So we will have to cover that uh, scenario also, right? We should not only cover the um, success scenarios. So we will have to have two input output system here. One is a, uh, the success scenario and one is the failure scenario. So if you just test the success scenario, then you will get coverage of 60 to 70% only. Then you have to add the failure scenario also, and then you will get the coverage of more. So this is an M unit. This is not a part of the certified developer course actually, but still, if you have any doubts, we will just uh, check time to time. Okay. So is it uh, clear Shiva or anything else uh, still? Yeah, I think, are you going to, are you planning to show any examples with M unit? Uh, so actually it's i told you as it's not part of the uh, developer course and uh, it's uh, separately covered in a different uh, course but uh, yeah if if you are requiring this then we can cover our take on session on this m unit 
Okay. Yeah, if you could explain, that would be great. Uh, okay. Okay. So yeah, we'll not uh, explain it uh, right now. We will start first hour with our course curriculum, and in between or at the end, if we get uh, some time, we will definitely include this. It's not a big thing. It's simple thing, but yeah, I will include this. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So next is uh, the API management. So as we saw, uh, there are two inner circles which is completed with web service with API. The third thing, uh, third uh, thing is that uh, you have to uh, deploy or manage your API. Okay. So right now we have built it and tested it. We did not deploy it anywhere, right? So we will deploy. Right. Uh, the other day, Nazma was asking that where we are deploying this API. When I was doing in any point studio, I was just clicking here and I was running the project and it was getting deployed on my local. But right now, once we are completed, uh, um, like building our application testing, we will deploy it to the Cloud Hub or uh, the end runtime fabric anywhere, which is the hosted environment for the client. So this in this stage, that's what we will do. We'll first deploy the service so if you see the first diagram is runtime manager so here our service will be deployed okay then we have the second step which is create and deploy proxy so whenever we just provide this endpoint in runtime manager what we do is we create one more application over it okay so just to safeguard again from outside world we don't uh, give this endpoint to external uh, external world what we do is we create one more application on runtime manager and then we provide that url okay and then we have secure like in api manager you can just add security policies and um, all those things okay so that's where you do the secure uh, securing of your api and then comes monitoring so once your API is up and running, you will monitor it and you will see how many requests, how many loads and all those things are coming. What is the CPU utilization? What is the number of total requests going and coming? These things we can monitor through API monitor. Then we have analyze, which is the API analytics. So this one I showed you already that you can see that where our requests are coming from, from which region and all that. And if you see there, there are unwanted requests coming from other regions, suppose your application is deployed in US and your customer based in is you in US only and you're not targeting any other country and you see that requests are coming from Australia so in that case it may be a like a, a bogus request or it can be a hacker's attempt to hack this um, API so this happens every day so we have to monitor that and we have to uh, limit the API endpoint to US only so in that case, we have few options available in Endpoint Manager where you can blacklist the IPs or whitelist the IPs and you can just um, restrain or restrict the access from the outside world and only to US. So, and then you have troubleshoot and then we have scale. So suppose if we have uh, deployed an application today, which is an uh, online uh, uh, web portal or online shopping portal application and right now the request is uh, like 10 10 requests 20 requests per day but suppose your application uh, got hit and we are receiving more than 100 200 requests per day or even more then we need to scale our up application and scaling means uh, i think uh, you'll be aware that we can do some horizontal scaling and vertical scaling if you're not aware of these uh, terms and what horizontal and vertical scaling means we can uh, just explain you that also. Okay, so scaling will come and then respond. So this is not an important feature, it's just uh, that after scaling, how the response is there. Okay, and we have this visualizer. So this is again not used, it is provided by Microsoft, but uh, we rarely use this. Okay. So we are complete with uh, the three uh, layers and uh, development cycle. So it started with the API specification. And then we have the API implementation where we will move to any point studio and build our project. And the third step is deploy our application and uh, play around with all those things which we have in any point platform. Okay. Now uh, we have discussed enough, I think, on uh, Exchange. 
but still we will just have a look that how an exchange and uh, it will look like so <clears throat> rather giving the examples from here i'll go to the exchange mo module so i'll come to api designer and this is my any point platform so under this hood i have all those things right design center exchange api manager runtime manager visualizer monitoring all those things so right now i'll go to exchange as soon as i come uh, if you see this picture it has so many connectors but my exchange is showing only one picture uh, one connector or one api to me why is this this is a usual thing which you will see when you are working for a project or company that your internal uh, developers whatever they built you will use those only very rarely you will use something which is provided by mulesoft okay so we will try to leverage whatever is already built by our developers and we will use that and in some cases when where we want it uh, like in a short time then we can just get it from mulesoft because it is all our chargeable connectors and it is de depending on how you use it so these are all connectors so suppose you are making an api which requires a, a connection from s3 amazon s3 what is amazon s3 it's uh, just a storage for files so every system previously every company used to maintain some files on their server which it can be linux server where they will put all the files it can be csv files or image files or any kind of files even video files so like netflix they used right now they are totally on cloud and uh, they use this amazon s3 connector so not the amazon s3 connector the amazon s3 to store all the videos content okay so that's why uh, they are able to move to all the other countries uh, very easily because they have all this file stored on cloud so they don't have to migrate this uh, videos and go to the countries and uh, set the server there okay so many uh, big kind of like big firms are using amazon s3 and it's a very popular service by amazon so similarly we have other connectors like sap connector uh twilio connector salesforce connector einstein connector all these connectors but you'll hardly use this and it depends again on your on your on your organization that they are using this connectors or not but yes we have this connections available and when you come to you know master like your uh, company will be there and there whatever you have developed these will be your connectors like one rest api we have here and this was developed by me and i can see the documentation i have not provided anything and i have provided this get feature right where i am getting all the flights so if i go and send some request i'll be able to get all the flights right so this is exchange coming next to uh, the success of c4e so as i said this is a very important uh, thing in your organization and that uh, we have already discussed that what they do that uh, they manage central it and they uh, whatever uh, apis or connectors which we develop they publish it to exchange and from there we can uh, use it in our project or someone else also can use it and then before uh, creating a new project we should definitely come to our exchange and see that if it is already present or not so what i mean by that is suppose if you are a new developer to a uh, new organization and you are asked to create some flights uh, flights are like suppose you have to create a flight and you should just provide a destination and you should get the flight of that destination so in that case you should not create a new flight api you should use this flight api and just you should uh, make some changes and do that okay so that's why we should always come and check in exchange that whatever we have or we can discuss with our seniors that uh, do we need to create this uh, api fresh or do we have anything else which we can reuse so most of the times 50 percent times you will be able to reuse all this uh, flights which are already created and you have to just do few modifications that's why i was telling you the other day that uh, don't uh, get scared by these uh, design center code because these uh, most of the parts will be done by some other people and then you can start uh, reusing this component and once you start reusing the component then you can uh, slowly learn how this uh, this code uh, all this line of code works 
okay so first what you'll do is you'll just go to this code and you'll copy paste or you have an option of uh, here if you have you, you can see just duplicate you can duplicate this and suppose they just ask you to add one more uh, resource here we have get resource so they will ask you just add one more resource so what your job will be is just copy this line and add it here once that's all your api specification you don't have to uh, touch any of these line of codes because these are all reusable codes okay <clears throat> so <clears throat> this is a success of ec4e then coming to the any point platform and any point exchange i think we did it uh, multiple times and we covered this part that we have exploring the any point platform and any point exchange so i'll not go to this again because it will just take some time so this already we covered and explore any point platform if you still have any doubt in this any point platform we can cover it again so please let me know that uh, if you want me to cover it again or not it's just the runtime manager, API manager, and any point exchange. So <clears throat> please tell me, uh, should I cover this any point uh, platform again, or like hmm. you're good with it? No, I think. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. So again this is the uh, same thing that uh, if you want to do some uh, designing you can do it in api designer where we are mocking apis and uh, we will design that and in any point studio we will use this modules uh, 6 to 13 there are total 13 modules which will be covering in our uh, project and we will be basically working more time most of the time in any point studio so if you see in api designer we have only one module and this will tell you that we are actually will just cover one module where we will be designing our APIs and most of the work will, hap will happen on any point studio. <clears throat> then coming to this. Uh, cloud Kumar, what is that yeah. flow design? There is one more flow yeah, design. This is a flow designer. Okay, I'll show you that also. So if you come here in design center, I'll come to the design center. So I did not tell you about that because it's just a marketing thing uh, from Usoft. It is actually not being used by anyone. So when you do a create new here, you have API specification, API fragment or new MuLab. Okay. So we use mostly this one, new API specification, the RAML part. And if you have something reusable, then you use fragment. And when you click a new Mule app and if you give a name, any name and create an app then you will go to the flow designer so loading flow designer and this is similar to your any point studio so whatever project we are uh, we developed the other day right the hello world project this one if you see this project right listener and set payload we were doing so whatever we are building here mulesoft says that you can build the same thing on our flow designer also see i'll give an http connector and i'll do next and then select a target we can select any target let's go to the canvas so this is similar to what we will be designing here that we have a listener and we can uh, add a set payload the same thing you can do it here also but this is not recommended they, they are just promoting that you don't have to uh, use ide in the future you'll be using only this uh, environment to create your project but this is not actually true no like none of our developers or anyone are actually developing projects on flow designer we will have to design it here only because it is having more functionalities and uh, more granularity of all the components okay so again uh, it will it will take uh, like few 20 35 minutes to create a flow here uh, we can uh, see that if you want in the other class next class okay if you want to see how we are creating the same flow here okay yeah thank you but it is it will not be used in any of your project i'm very sure on this okay okay so uh, coming to this uh, this is an important uh, a part 
especially for the uh, manager or uh, the people who are at uh, technical like uh, high roles like lead roles so they will have to decide this cloud hub worker size and memory or they want to do it on uh, multiple instance or not so i'll tell you what cloud hub worker is and not from the slides we'll go to the runtime manager here so when you come to runtime manager so now suppose my system my hello world project i am taking this example of hello world project okay <clears throat> so this is ready this is totally ready and it is working as fine if i am sending a request it is working and i am getting output of hello world or whatever okay so once it it is ready i'll create a jar file of it and i will go to runtime manager okay so i don't have applications here okay let me go to the other one this is a freshly created for you people that's why we don't see any applications go to the other training module and there login then i will be able to see if i go to runtime manager i'll be able to see the application which is deployed by me okay so this is one application and the hello world you will uh, get it here and you will deploy it in cloud in runtime manager when we go to settings here you can see right that choose file so you can choose that jar file and just upload it here okay so once you upload it here your application will be running in cloud hub so this is how you run your application or deploy your application on cloud hub and when you come to the you will have to provide all these details uh, the runtime version the insight and all this i'll tell you so in runtime version you have to provide the latest uh, version it's 7.3 or 7.4 whatever is present at that time you can provide that then you will come to worker size so this is what cloud hub worker is okay worker size if i have to give you uh, uh, i'll sh let me show you in uh, that chat Kumar? Yeah, sorry guys, I think uh, I got disconnected for some one minute. So till where like uh, I was uh, able to, you were able to listen to me. Uh, you opened the uh, chat one, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Give me one second. I'll share my screen and then. Okay, we can use Zoom internal also. So you're able to see the screen, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. 
so let's assume uh, this is our cloud up worker i'll just write cloud up worker and this is uh, similar to your uh, cpu what you use any in any system it is like a cpu and what we will do is we will just create an application and we will deploy in here so this will be our application that jar file which i was talking about that jar file will be running here okay so under this that jar file will be running and suppose uh, it has a memory of 500 mb and some processing power of uh, suppose uh, any any processing power of two uh, virtual cpus or four virtual cpus so this is this will be one cloud hub worker and you have to just uh, remember this and that on one cloud hub worker you can't uh, run two applications on one cloud hub worker we can run only one applications so in our normal systems in our cpu if you think we can run multiple applications and multiple uh, programs right but in cloud hub worker it is just separated and it is only allowed to run one application on one cloud hub worker so it's just like a cpu instance it's actually an aws uh, instance uh, provided and it is used by MuleSoft, and we just deploy our application on this Cloud Hub Worker. Okay, so th that's what uh, uh, we were speaking about Cloud Hub Worker. So it runs in a separate container from every other application. It is deployed and monitored independently. So this is uh, what it means that we can run on only one application on the Cloud Hub Worker. And the third line says that runs in a specific worker cloud in a region of the world. Okay, so these uh, this application which you see, you will not have control that which region of the world it is running. Okay, basically most of the application will be running on US region, but in which region US East one, US East two, which region you will not be able to control. Okay, so this this will be controlled by MuleSoft. Then we have other lines is workers can have different memory capacity and processing power. So as I said that uh, this uh, worker is as a CPU, so it will come with different configuration. Like in our uh, laptop, we see different configuration, right? 8 GB RAM or uh, 2 TB hard disk like that. So it will come with a different configuration. So it uh, the configuration will look like something like 0 0.1 V cores, and 500 mb of memory something like that so this will be one the minimum size of your cloud hub worker 0 0.1 v cores is the virtual cores okay and the 500 mb of memory it will have so you have to decide that how which application should uh, use uh, which v cores and which mb okay so this is uh, decided by the stakeholders and also the uh, the team leads or the architects of the project. So as a developer, you'll not be uh, asked to decide, but you, you can ask this question that which V cores and how many, uh, how much memory I should use. So this, when I, I'm talking about one worker, right? We have one worker and we have all this configuration. So first thing is you have to know that uh, should I use a bigger uh, worker size or bigger memory capacity? So it's simple, right? Like if you use a bigger uh, system, a bigger, better laptop, then your system will um, be more efficient and it will work fast, right? And if you have a smaller, a slower laptop, then it will be working slowly. So you have to decide on, depending on your application, that what kind of worker you want. So this is the first uh, part which we need to understand. Uh, that so workers have, can have different memory capacity and processing power so we have 0 0.v cores 500 me 0 0.2 v cores 1 gb memory or 1 v core with 1.5 gb memory so there are other also worker size so this is worker size coming to this part applications can be scaled vertically by changing the worker size and application can be scaled horizontally by adding multiple workers so if you are aware of uh, vertical and horizontal scaling, then you'll be able to understand this line. If you're not aware, then I'll give you an example and try to explain. So <clears throat> let's uh, take an example of a uh, call center, okay? So we have a call center and we have this two person. So let's assume this is person one. I'll give P1 and this is person two. Okay, 
so we have this is just an example of a call center and we have two person who is taking calls okay so we are receiving a calls to this person and calls to this person so he can take 10 calls and he can also take 10 calls per hour okay but suppose uh, the call increases uh, the number of calls increases in our in an hour so what will happen suppose we are getting 30 40 calls so this person will not be able to handle those calls right because he is uh, capable of taking 10 calls in an hour he can just maximum stretch to 12 calls 15 calls but he will have hard time to uh, attend 20 calls at a time so at that time as a manager what you will do so the answer will be that uh, you will increase your worker size right you will hire more people so what you will do is you will increase you will get two more people and person three and person four and they will start uh, uh, like accepting a few more calls so now your system will work fine and this person will do 10 calls 10 calls 10 calls 10 calls so you'll be able to handle 40 calls so if you see in this case what we did to improve our application to improve our call center what we did, did is horizontal scaling we scaled horizontally if you see in this line we scaled horizontally right we increased the number of person so that is called horizontal scaling so if you come here in this example in our example here we can see we have one worker and one cpu one laptop just assume this is a laptop okay so one laptop we have and our application is deployed on that laptop right and we are receiving 10 requests uh, per hour so this is able to handle but as soon as it increases more than 10 like 15 requests 100 requests then this application with this memory will not be able to handle that request so in that case what we will do is we will deploy our application on some more workers right the same application on some more workers right so what we will do is we will have different uh, same application deployed on two three workers so if you come to this example of management center you can see that 4.3 and this is the worker size it is 0.2 v cores and if you see the workers i have one i can just drop down and i can increase to two workers or three workers in that case what will happen is i will do a horizontal scaling correct or any doubts in horizontal scaling till now okay so we don't have any issues or any doubts on horizontal scaling so this is horizontal scaling so remember whenever you're doing a horizontal scaling you are increasing the number of people that is horizontal scaling if you want to remember from this example if we have two employees and if you uh, get two more employees that will be horizontal scaling okay so this is what we will do if you want to do a horizontal scaling we will just increase the number of workers that will be horizontal scaling now coming to what is vertical scaling okay so in example we saw that app can be scaled vertically uh, app can be scaled horizontally by adding in multiple workers so we saw horizontal scaling now we will see what is vertical scaling okay so we'll go back to this example and again we'll take that example of that call center so suppose you have one worker and we have one more worker and these two are new joiners like they have just experience of uh, one year or two year so they are able to take uh, calls of 10 uh, 10 uh, number of calls per hour but if you have some guy who has an um, experience of three or four years he'll be able to make uh, take more calls right he will be able to take more calls like 20 30 calls so what you will do is there is a requirement that 20 more calls are increasing per hour so in that case you will have two option either to horizontal scale get two more workers of one year experience or there will be another way that you can get a, a worker a person with who has four five years experience and he can handle 20 calls right so these two options you have right so you have to decide which option you have to take either handle get two more workers two more person or get one more person who can do more job so when you will do this thing it will be horizontal scaling you are getting more person and when you'll just improve 
the capability of a person who has able to take 20 calls per second, then it will call vertical scaling. So this will holds good with our system also. So previously we had 0 0.1 V core. We had 0 0.1 V cores and 500 MB memory, right? And we wanted to do a vertical scaling. So what we will do is we will increase this uh, to suppose one V core and 1.5 GB memory. So in this case, it will be able to handle more calls than compared to 0 0.1 V cores. So this is called vertical scaling. So how you will understand vertical scaling, there's a system which is small. So it will obviously have 0 0.1 V cores and 500 memory. And if you just uh, like take a bigger system, it will look like this. And on top of that, you will just improve, include it. And similarly, if you want more bigger system, this will look like this, which will have two GB memory or some two V cores. So this is going up in nature. That is why we say vertical scaling. You're increasing the size of your CPU. So that is vertical scaling. And when you're increasing the number of your CPUs, that is horizontal scaling. Okay, so are we clear with this uh, two examples of horizontal and vertical scaling? It is not very much related to MuleSort, but yeah, it will help you in any kind of uh, project environment whenever you see a horizontal or vertical scaling. Yeah, Kumar, I have two questions. Yeah. Uh, so one is the 0 0.1, one uh, week core. So mm -hmm. um, what is that because so let's say you said there is a memory right yeah so memory you have it 500 mb but why right. you are calling it as 0 0.1 v core okay so if you see any uh, cpu spec specs you will be able to see the cores of that cpu right we have intel uh, the company and it provides four v cores two v cores of cpu that is the computing power Okay, and the memory is the storage power, like how much uh, data it can store and the cores will decide the computing power, correct? So this we are using AWS uh, system, which is uh, VP, uh, what you say, in AWS we have a dedicated instance, okay, where we use a shared memory. So we are using that V cores and that memory. So I think this is a like question which you're asking, or is there anything else you're trying to ask? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think now I got. So it, it is depending upon the capacity and capacity, uh, computing capacity. Speed of, right, right, okay. right. So how right. do we know what are available on the AWS? Like when we have to choose, right? Uh, when we are creating the workers in mm -hmm. the cloud hub. So yeah. how do we know what are different uh, workers we have available? So <clears throat> if you see here, we have the drop downs, right? And uh, I'm not able to do a drop down. I think uh, this is uh, restricted. So I have to just check it again, and then I, I'll be able to show it to you. But uh, in a normal 30 day trial version, you'll not be able to increase the worker from one or two. But when you have an enterprise addition, you'll be able to increase this directly. So once you pull this drop down, you will have all those details at 0 0.2 week or 0 0.1 GB, all those configuration will be here only. It's not like very critical or very complex to see. Uh, and there is no way that you can decide, suppose if you have built this application here and there is no uh, calculation or formula that you should uh, use uh, 0 0.1 week or 1 GB memory for this worker you have to come up with that, right? You have to know that how many you have to ask the client that, okay, so how many requests we are expecting in one day or one hour, okay? So they will say, okay, we are um, getting some thousand requests. Then you can go back to your project or your teams and they, then you can ask them that for thousand uh, requests a day, which, uh, which zero power workers which you are using, which is recommended by our organization. And they can say, okay, we, for this thousand, we are using 0 0.1 v core only okay so normally most of the application which is like uh, normal in nature like 10000 5000 request this 0 0.2 v cores will work okay and again this worker choosing the worker totally depends on the client apart from just uh, increasing the number of request this is also helping in disaster management right so suppose there are two applications deployed with the same jar file 
and in some region there's a failure right it can happen the system can fail and that server can fail on that region so the second system will be up right because it isn't deployed in different region so this comes in uh, also from a disaster recovery point of view also so some place where you don't want that uh, that only one worker will suffice your work but still the client or stakeholder will say that for maximum availability increase the workers to two or three okay okay so the next question is uh, yeah i think you partially explained now but, but uh, when do no, no, you please, Please, uh, if you would want to know more about it, if I'm not able to get your concern. Please tell me that. Yeah. Be clear uh, in the starting also, so it will be good. Yeah, yeah sure. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, when to use horizontal worker? When to use vertical, vertical worker? Right. Okay. So again, it depends on you. Like you have to decide. I, I'll tell you a use case where you can use the horizontal scaling. Okay. So suppose uh, the client says that I want this application to be available. Okay. All the time. If this word is there that they don't want any downtime in our application, then you have to for sure use multiple workers. Okay. In that case, what we will do is horizontal scaling, right? And in vertical scaling will only happen when they say, okay, I'm, I'm able to see 100 requests, but it is some taking some time and it is not performing. That's why we have this any point monitoring, right? Where we will be able to see that how many requests are coming at a time. In that case, suppose you have done, like you already did horizontal scaling of two workers, correct? Now you can increase the work, worker size and that will be vertical scaling. So I'll give you an example here. So suppose, what we did is we deployed our application with 0.1 vCore and one worker, correct? This is a basic. Next, the client says, I want my application to be available all the time. I don't want any downtime. Then what we will do is- Increase zero... the cost. Correct, correct. Uh, we will increase the workers. So 0.1 vCore will be there, but we will increase, they will create one more application. So there will be two workers, correct? With 0.1 vCore. But the client now will come back and say, yes, I can see it's not down, but uh, I think the load on the system is more. So in that case, what you will do, you will not uh, add one more worker to it, right? Because in one system, we are getting more load. So in that case, we will increase the size of it. So we'll increase from 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 vCores, but we will have two systems still there. I hope this is clear or else I can give you more examples or I can show you in a um, more better way if you're not able to understand this. Uh, I guess this can be uh, understood with complete session uh, going forward while we are doing the practice. Yeah, implementation, yeah. <laughs> but normally we will be uh, like in this free trial version, we use 0 0.1 week or only. And this point I am stressing, but this is not like... Um, uh, it's not uh, like a very much stressed in the course. I am stressing it because we see this not in MuleSoft, but if you go to other projects or other technology also, you will be able to see vertical and horizontal scaling. People know and people talk about vertical and horizontal, but they don't actually know much about it. That's why I was stressing on this point. Okay, we will not have to deal with this in our project because we will not have that much of request. So as it so we will take this call or on the management level they will management take. level they will take your call yeah. okay because you will not see you are developing an api okay. suppose a hello world api or the flights api you are a developer you will not know that how much traffic they are expecting right there will be a different team who will do a survey and analytics and all those things and they will come up with the number that they are expecting 500 requests for this in per hour right so you will do your de de development, but you will not be responsible for like calculating the worker size and all those things. Okay. And this, yeah. we don't uh, spend much time also, right? We, they, they, our higher management will say, okay, use two workers. We will just use two workers like that. Got you. So I think we are over the time. So we have this thing and if you see this diagram this is important throughout the course if you understand this part this slide then you will have like very um, 
very easy I mean in, in your uh, mule event point of view so this is very important how our data looks in a mule soft environment so i'll not take uh, cover this in today's session because it will take some time like 10 10 15 minutes i will need for this to explain okay and next we have a few quiz questions so i think we'll cover this in next session only but yeah let's go through the quiz at least and we can cover that session in uh, monday's class okay so again this quiz is taken from mulesoft uh, website so if you find it easy so this type of questions you will see in certification so the first question is what mulesoft product enables publishing sharing and searching of apis any point exchange yeah that's correct so we have any point exchange where we can search and publish our apis in a notebook we just document in designer we create the application in the specification in runtime manager we deploy our application so the correct answer is any point exchange so this is asking which asset cannot be created using design center so we saw that design center right we'll go back to design center again and i'll show you if you go to design center it's asking that which asset you cannot can uh, create so if you see we can create specification we can create fragment we can create mule app we can create async api these four fragments uh, we can create so let's see what is our question that which asset cannot be created using design center so we can portals. create specification yes so portals we cannot create we create can create all those three but not portals portals are actually where our application is published right after exchange we can see where it is published so what is the main purpose of flow designer in a design center so this uh, question was asked by shiva that what is the purpose of flow designer so as i told you this will be the correct answer to design and deploy a develop fully functional mule application in a hosted development environment so this will be the answer I, we did not see much that's why i'm telling you so when we see the flow designer uh, we can see what is it actually means this also don't worry about it because we did not cover and you can see this application this question where does a deployed flow designer application run in any point platform so where does our application run whenever we deploy our application where it will run nice. will it run in manager center exchange or cloud of worker where it will run D. Cloud. Cloud Hub. Yeah, correct. So yeah, people can get confused with API manager, but actually application is not running on API manager. It is like we secure, we manage our application, but the application is running on Cloud Hub worker, like yeah. the actual CPU. The name is little confusing, but uh, this is where our application will be running on the actual system. Okay. So we completed the quiz. We have one question which we didn't uh, check. We will have to cover this slide and we will be able to cover it. Okay. So I think Shiva, you had one more question. I uh, sorry for that. I missed that question in that. So you can ask that question before closing today's uh, session. No, no. I I asked you that the one is the size of the CPU and another one is when to use which work uh, which uh, scaling. Yeah. So like I told you, right? It depends totally on the request size. So there is one more thing. Uh, like whenever you develop an API, like I have developed this API, so I know our uh, my client will also tell me that we are not requesting uh, many requests on this site. Okay, many uh, more requests on this site, but there will be some applications uh, where it will be where it will be a showstopper, and as soon as it is deployed or thrown into production the usability and uh, many people will request that application the client will know that right so in that case what they do is they will ask to do a stress testing for that application so we do a stress testing we do a load testing so these kind of things we'll be doing and uh, it is done through jmeter so what jmeter does is it uh, mocks again the request so you can set that i want thousand requests in a hour or in a, in a like minute so what it will do you will just have to provide suppose 
this is our url uh, suppose you have developed an application of uh, flights and you have make my trip here in the flights you will just provide this url to jmeter and you will say that uh, you have thousand requests hitting this website in one second you can configure that and it will uh, do the same thing for you it will hit thousand requests to this website and if you see there's uh, like the website is getting slower it, it is not able to tag, take that thousand uh, request then you can in, uh, tell the client that with one worker or this week course we are not able to we are getting error you'll start getting error if you don't uh, uh, hit the flight properly so in that case you will increase the worker size and you'll, then you will do a load testing again okay so any application which is critical the client will ask you to do a load test and uh, share the details with them okay so i think uh, uh, we are done with today's session if you have any questions we can take for another two minutes uh, or else we'll close for today so kumar one more request is uh, you know while we are going through the uh, share, uh, uh training right you know yeah. any of the you know place if you see okay so this is what covered if if you can tell us like if this is what covered in the training but mm -hmm. these are few other things which you can lend yourself like m units right for example yeah yeah uh, so like that which which will be useful um so because currently it is not started but Mm -hmm. my assignment going forward in three four months it will mm -hmm. be extensive on mule yeah yeah okay so it will be helpful for me if you can tell okay so these are the extended parts of this and you can go and uh, learn these topics because i don't even know what all the things which we can do with mule soft and what all different things right correct correct yeah. Yeah. so if you can if you could explain uh, give me some pointers like okay so these are the few things which you can study yourself and get more knowledge that will be helpful sure so your uh, assignment is getting started in uh, three months or so right yes yes okay. yeah basically you know maybe maybe based on my current role mm -hmm. i stopped development last two months last two years back mm -hmm. so but uh, you know because this is a new thing I may have to do uh, right, maybe a right. couple of interfaces and then slowly going into lead position, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, when we go into lead position, we need to know more things than uh, in and out of the application. Yeah. 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 So, so, yes, I understood your point. So, 90 to 90 was 90 to 95 percent of things which is uh, uh, like important for developer that's why this course is uh, for mules of certified developer right we will cover that it's not just from the certification point of view but uh, like making you uh, production ready for any project okay so we will cover that for sure but there are few things like i discussed m unit and j meter so these things are not covered because for these things we required more resources and this is actually a part of platform architect or solution architect point of view okay but still as you said that uh, it will be helpful for you or you can learn it from outside i will try to cover those and as you said you have some time so what we will do is we will first complete the course as that is in a very structured way so we can't uh, we can't afford to miss that uh, structure okay so we as i showed you in this example that we will first create the design then we will go to build and then we will manage so this is how we will be able to uh, we will, we are going to complete this project in this way only okay yeah yeah so once okay. we will cover all this we can add uh, more things uh, which is required uh, apart from this project okay we will cover those also for sure like this any point uh, m unit i will cover in one session and i don't think you'll require more session on that and even if you go on youtube and search on m unit you will not see many many videos okay you there will be only few videos because it's actually not much used in the project it's just for like do documentation purpose right it's used mostly to document and uh, give a pass that the testing is completed so that's why people are not focusing on m unit but yes j meter i will cover uh, i'll give one or two hours for j meter okay yeah 
thank you thank you kumar uh, that that's really helpful yeah. sure sure thank you shiva and thank you nazima uh, if you don't have any other questions we'll wrap up for today and i yeah. think it's uh, we can then start on monday right monday same time so you are both are okay with this timing right or any hard uh, hard blocks for you i'm okay uh, shiva i'm go for shiva yeah yeah i i am good okay sure okay then that's great so monday we will start yeah and please go through the recordings uh, like if you feel any doubts then go through the recordings otherwise this initial sessions i don't think if you have focused uh, here so i don't think it's required to go but if you have any doubts go through the recordings and from monday uh, we will start a uh, uh, fully fledged uh, working on ramal and everything okay okay, okay. Yeah. thank you guys thank you for thank you, thank you. have a nice weekend have a nice day